Hello. I wanted to talk briefly today about the power of direct seeing into the nature of one's own consciousness. This comes most readily, to be sure, through deep meditation. And there are certainly uh, sages from every tradition who have demonstrated that this approach of seeing directly in is not only efficacious in helping that individual to grow, but helping them to find a great deal of happiness, the bliss of nirvana, the bliss of samadhi, the bliss of divine union. So regardless of where we start, what our particular uh, religious background might be or lack of religious background, uh, we can learn to train the mind to be very strong and to apprehend itself at its source, thereby finding illumination. I wanted to read a quote on this point that comes from page 1053 of The Second Coming of Christ, which is Yogananda's book on the words of Christ in the context of yoga and meditation. He says here, As a philosopher beautifully put it, whenever an honest attempt has been made to unravel the mystery of the many and the one, mysticism seems to be the only or final answer. And he goes on to say, later on, from page 1508, something that I think is also very valuable to us as we begin to learn how to take every thought captive, how to dive into the core. Here he says, Medical scientists work to achieve bodily healing and reconstruction from the outside, but some injuries and diseases defy cure because the doctors do not understand the combined interaction of life-tronic currents that forms new flesh and tissues. But one who has control <coughs> of cosmic life as well as specialized life can bring the intelligent cosmic energy into the physical form to reinforce and rouse the specific bodily life force. And then there's a footnote here. We'll read one more page and then, or one more paragraph and look at the footnote. As soon as that is done, the cells begin to throb with life and to repair or dispel damaged and dead cells. That is what Jesus did. And when the body was renewed, he lived again in resurrected form. Many think of the body as compact, solid matter, but science now defines the body as waves of electromagnetic energy. Matter has been dissolved down to photons. But what is the difference between light and consciousness, and what is the relation of consciousness and the body? The decipherment of that arcanum of cosmic being is the principal challenge confronting future generations of broadened scientific minds. In the footnote, Professor N. C. Panda, Ph.D., former dean of Orissa University in India, writes in Maya in Physics, Shankara, the non-dualist philosopher of India, has recognized the consciousness of particles long back in the 8th century. Some physicists, like Evan Walker, speculate that photons may be conscious. He remarks, quote, Consciousness may be associated with all quantum mechanical processes. Since everything that occurs is ultimately the result of one or more quantum mechanical events, the universe is inhabited by an almost unlimited number of rather discrete conscious, usually non-thinking entities that are responsible for the detailed working of the universe. Brahman, which is reality, is pure consciousness. This consciousness is reflected in maya and the products of maya, as a result of all insentient things of the universe gain consciousness. There is nothing, whether macro or micro, stars or photons, that are completely unconscious. This certainly is the experience of the meditator that begins to go very deep in their own practice and recognize that there is a kind of connection, a heartfelt connection, between any object, even a pencil. Uh, one begins to realize that the atoms that comprise, the wood that comprises that uh, pencil, and then the photons, uh, the, uh, the atoms and the subatomic particles that comprise that particular form, are vibrating with a certain frequency that we can begin to apprehend as part of ourself. And as we do that, we realize that all things are connected and that we 
the true self is conscious throughout the whole cosmic uh, warp and weft.